Hi guys, and welcome back. As promised in my RTX 3060 test, today we are taking a closer look at the Radeon RX 6600 XT. On paper, the big power efficiency improvements and access to new features such as the Infinity Cache and Ray Tracing align with the promise made by Team Red for the ultimate 1080p gaming experience. On the other hand, seeing graphs in their promotional videos that are targeting the cheaper RTX 3060 really makes you wonder, did AMD cut 6600XT a bit more than they should? Looking at the specs, 6600XT released in July 2021 for 379 USD and it was manufactured using 7 nanometer process. This RDNA 2.0 GPU came with 2048 shading units, 32 RT cores and 32 megabytes of infinity cache. The 8 gigs of GDDR6 memory was clocked at 2000 MHz but uses a rather narrow 128-bit memory bus. Card operates 160 watt TDP and uses a PCIe Gen 4 by 8 connection. The card I'm testing today is the Asus ROG Strix 6600XT which I purchased brand new last October for £290. Nowadays, a good example can be had for around £190 or about £230 USD, making it about 10-15% to cheaper than the Nvidia's RTX 3060. Let's see how they compare in a set of benchmarks first. With a score of over 9900 points in 3 Mark Time Spy, 6600XT is off to a good start and beats the RTX 3060 by 8% and also tops up its predecessor, the 5600XT, by 18%. The gap between 6600 XT and 3060 further widened to 17% in Firestrike Extreme. A quick side note, it's interesting that it only took less than 5 years for a mid-range card to get within the reach of the 1500USD dual GPU monster, the Radeon Pro Duo. Nvidia cards still dominate in Blender's Classroom benchmark and the 3060 is about 15% faster here. When compared to its older sibling, the 6600XT is nearly 33% faster, nothing to be sniffed at. First glimpse into 6600XT's ray tracing performance in Port Royal reveals Nvidia 2nd gen RT cores are well ahead of the game. RTX 3060 leads the way and scores nearly 8% more points in this test. Back to Heaven benchmark, 6600XT beats the 3060 by 12% and its older sibling by a staggering 30%. Now that's what I call generational improvement. When taking power draw into consideration, RX 6600XT excels. Dividing Heaven benchmark score by 145 watts used on average resulted in a chart topping score of 32.4. The older 5600XT trades below the 3060 and both cards are around 22% behind. Looking at the MSRP to score ratio, 6600XT scored slightly below the RTX 3060, but I guess there is no need to remind you that we almost need to ignore this as both of these cards would magically sell for almost double their MSRP. Lastly, let's check out the second hand value of the 6600XT. As I've mentioned, a good clean example can be had for around £190 or USD, which makes it a better value over the RTX 3060. Yet, it's actually slightly worse than the 5600XT. Let's move on to game testing. And to keep things simple, I'm following 3060's benchmarks, but I will be using FSR where possible. Starting with Witcher 3 first. Using the RT preset, 6600XT achieved 45 FPS on average, which is nearly 16% slower, further proving that Team Red was behind with their RT performance. I would also argue that using ray tracing with this class of GPU is questionable. When I then switched to Ultra preset instead, I saw a nice boost to 93 FPS on average with 1% lows at 75. While 3060 pushed 7 extra FPS on average, 6600XT managed much better 1% lows which wins my vote, but let me know in the comments down below if you do agree. Days Gone with very high preset runs great on both cards and although the average FPS sits within the margin of error, 1% lows were around 10% better with the 6600XT. Looks like Starfield has finally received official beta DLSS support, but for this test I'm sticking with FSR2 and the medium preset. 
64 FPS on average and solid 1% lows at 49 makes the 6600 XT a clear winner in this game. Arguably, still one of the most demanding games out there, Cyberpunk 2077 runs much better using Nvidia's RTX 3060. 6600 XT's average FPS was behind by 24% and 1% low took even bigger 48% hit. In essence, gameplay went from perfectly playable to not very enjoyable. Because Microsoft's Flight Simulator only offers FSR upscaling while using the DirectX 12 API, and since the 3060 was tested using DirectX 11, the 6600 XT is at disadvantage here. Still, it pushed 64 FPS on average with 1% lows at 42 using high-end preset and TAA. Red Dead Redemption 2 proved that Vulkan API runs much better on AMD GPU. With 73 FPS on average, 6600 XT was faster by 18% and without a doubt winning this round. Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition with high settings and RC enabled makes the 6600 XT wish it never entered this test. With 78 FPS on average, 3060 takes a massive 44% lead in this title. Up next, I've played Far Cry 6 using Ultra Preset along with HD textures and DXR enabled. I think it's fair to say, both cards provided great experience, but AMD 6600 XT had a slight edge in this title. And the last game tested was Forza Horizon 5. With Extreme Preset, 6600 XT pushed 77 FPS on average, with 1% low sitting at 63. Still, RTX 3060 was around 6% faster. Right then. There is no doubt AMD has made some great improvements with their RDNA 2.0 architecture. Whether it's the amazing power efficiency or the brand new Infinity Cache, even today the 6000 series of cards are still relevant. The higher end of the lineup is particularly interesting as often they represent better value than the current 7000 series of cards or the 4000 series of cards from Nvidia. 6600 XT pretty much ticks all the needs of a 1080p gamer but it's not without its problems. Even though this card supports PCIe Gen 4, it is only wired to x8. Sure, no big deal for those of you running modern systems, but anyone else with an older system that is limited to just PCIe Gen 3, this includes my X299 testbench by the way, sadly, the 6600 XT will not perform to its full potential. To compensate for the rather puny 128-bit memory bus, AMD included Infinity Cache, and whilst I have no reason to suspect it does not serve its purpose, the amount included has been drastically reduced when compared to its more powerful sibling, the 6700 XT. Despite this, I think the 6600 XT is an excellent choice, and as we've seen, it traded blows with the more expensive and less power efficient RTX 3060, despite being limited by my 10th gen platform. Those of you looking to finally upgrade their older, power hungry and perhaps no longer supported GPU, this might be the one to get. I'm going to test Intel's Arc A770 next, so kindly place your bets now. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, give it a like or go absolutely wild and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.